Lord, we ask that you would wake us up to those ways that we have forgotten things about you and the ways we've forgotten um, some of the closeness we've had with you in the past. Wake us up to restore that. But we ask you, Lord, that you wouldn't just wake us up to restore what we've already experienced of you, but that you would wake us up to see and experience and learn things that we've never known before about you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we've had sort of this ongoing theme through the fall about how we don't want to be settling for just an okay walk with God, but we want to be experiencing a more full walk with God. And so to sort of build upon that during the season of Advent, we want to focus on what is a way that we can make sure that we're not just sort of sleeping through and going through the motions in our life of faith, but that we're actually fully awake to our life of faith so that we can fully experience God, fully see and love the people around us, fully live out our purpose for life. And our readings for today, there's two of our readings that focus on waking up, on being awake. And that's what I want to have us think about is, are we awake? Are we awake to see all the things that we used to see about God? Or have we sort of dozed and started to miss those things? Or are we awake to all those things that God wants to show us? Or are we sleeping through those things so that we're not seeing where God's at work in our lives and we're not seeing opportunities to love and serve? It talks about our reading from Matthew. Jesus says that during the time of Noah, People were going through, and they were just sort of going through the motions of life just fine. They were marrying, getting married, they were eating, they were drinking, they were doing all the stuff that you normally do. But who were they not awake to, except for one family? They weren't awake to God. And in the process, they ended up getting swept away, it said. So how do we make sure that we are awake? I mean, Noah and his family were, were awake for 100 years, preparing for that flood to come. How can we make sure that we're awake um, for whatever is coming up in our life. What I want to invite us to think about is, lots of times, like when I was a kid, I always thought that you needed to make sure that you were always stressed out about making sure you were ready if, if the end came and Jesus came, and I thought it was all about being stressed out and anxious, making sure that you don't miss Jesus. But I think that the older I get, the more I sense that all you need to do is be awake. If you're awake, then you're not going to miss Jesus. So Paul, in Romans 8, or actually to Romans, in our reading for today, we're in Romans 13. But I think Paul gives us a picture of what it looks like to wake up and to live a life of being awake. So that by the time we get to Romans 13, where he says, now is the time to wake up, he's given us a good description of what it, mean, what it looks like to live a life of being awake to God. Because if we're awake to God, we're not going to miss it when Jesus comes, because we're going to be seeing him all over the place. We're going to be aware of his presence all the time. So in Romans 8, or actually a little bit before Romans 8, Paul says all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In Romans 7, it says that no matter how hard Paul tries, he still can't overcome the sin in his life. But then he gives us a picture of what happens because of Jesus. He gives us a picture of what it looks like to wake up. He says... There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So he's inviting us to live a life of being awake to God. He says that in this life of being awake to God, no longer do we need to be motivated by fear, but now we can be motivated by love. If we're awake to God, no longer do we need to have the world tell us what to do, but we can be led by the Spirit. If we're awake to God, no longer do we need to feel disconnected from God, but the Holy Spirit connects us, teaches us how to pray, helps us to experience God. That when we're awake, um, we're not just seeing life as a whole random group of accidents happening, but we start to see God working for good no matter what's going on in our life. If we're awake, we start to see that we're not separated from God's love, but if God is for us, who can be against us, and nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So he continues to give us pictures of what it looks like to be awake. And as we, he gets to Romans 12, once again he says, Now don't be conformed to the things of the world. The world wants to press you into its mold and distract you and keep you asleep to what's going on. But be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you can be aware of what God is up to. You can see what God is up to. 
And when you're awake and you're aware of God and God's transforming your mind, then you're going to start honoring people. You're going to start forgiving people. You're going to start loving people. You're going to start being part of the solution rather than part of the problem. And right before our reading for today, there's a little summary of what it looks like to be awake. It gives a picture of what is the fulfilling of the law? Love. That's immediately before our invitation to be awake. That if you love, you have fulfilled the law. So how is it that we know that we're going to be awake? And how is it that we're going to be ready when Jesus comes? We live a life where we love God and we love our neighbor. And we're aware and we're forgiving and we're serving and we're loving and we're honoring. But then he goes on to say in this invitation in Romans 13, So now is the time to wake up. So put off the things that keep you asleep. And basically the things that keep us asleep to God and our neighbor are the things that turn us where? In toward ourselves. So he gives us just a short little list of all these words that we use in our normal daily language like licentiousness and debauchery and all those things. But basically the point of each of those words are don't focus on trying to find meaning in the things of the world because that'll cause you to be distracted from finding meaning in God. So don't find your meaning in life by reveling, by just trying to fill your life with pleasure all the time. Don't find meaning in life with drunkenness, where you're just basically shutting yourself down so you're not even aware of what's going on around you in the world. Don't fill your time with debauchery, one of those words that I use several times in normal conversations today. <laughs> but just basically it's sensuality, it's just sort of turning yourself over to things that you're trying to find your meaning in, in your own personal pleasures. Licentiousness. Don't feel like, well, you know what, I'm just not going to set any boundaries, I'm going to do whatever I want, because that's the way that I'm going to feel better about myself. But no, who do you end up hurting usually when you end up getting rid of any boundaries in your life? You end up hurting yourself, you end up hurting people around you, and if we're called to experience God by loving God and loving our neighbors, those boundaries are there for a purpose. So put off living in a way that you're willing to trample over other people for the sake of feeling better about yourself. Put off quarreling and jealousy because that's just going to disconnect you from people. It's going to cause you to not love each other very well. So if you put off all those things that keep you asleep to God, then you'll be awake to God. And what we're going to be doing during this season of, of Advent is we're going to be looking at sort of the gifts of baptism, because for me that's an invitation to be awake to God. And we're going to look a week at a time, so Sunday, Wednesday, and then the devotions during the week, we're going to be looking at three aspects of baptism that invite us to be awake and not sleep through Christmas again, and not sleep through what God wants to be doing in our lives. So this first week we're going to talk about What's one of the first things that happens in baptism? We're cleansed, we're washed, we're forgiven. So the first week we're going to look at being awake both to the need for forgiveness, because often that's one of Satan's biggest ways of keeping us asleep, is having us not even realize the things that we're doing are destroying us, are keeping us disconnected from God. So to wake up to see what are the things that are in the way but also to wake up to see that those things are no longer in the way if we give them to Jesus. So to be awake to sin and forgiveness this first week. And then the second week we're going to be, how do we wake up to our identity? That once we get the sin washed away, now we need to see, now who, who are we? Are we servants of God? Are we messed up, lost, hopeless people? Or are we beloved children of God? Are we friends of God? Because... Satan wants to keep us asleep. He, the last thing he wants us to know is who we are. The last thing he wants us to know is that we're sinful. The last thing he wants us to know is that we're forgiven. So first it's forgiveness and cleansing, then it's who we are in Christ. And then the third week, the gift of baptism is the Holy Spirit, an experience of intimacy of God, experience of the gifts of the Spirit being brought into what God is doing in the world. Because Satan wants us to sleep. Satan wants us to be a bunch of people who are not aware of our sin, don't realize we're being destroyed, destroying those around us, are not aware that we're forgiven, are not aware that we're valued and loved, and we're not aware that we have any sense of purpose in the world, 
We're not aware that we have any gifts to give to bless anybody else or that we're even supposed to be blessing anyone else. He just wants us to turn in upon ourselves and be asleep to God. So my invitation for you during this season of Advent is to invite God to help wake you up. To wake you up because who ends up getting defeated when, we, when the true people of God are awake? Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And one of the best ways to destroy the works of the devil is to wake up the body of Christ. Amen. Amen.